Hello and welcome to Ask the Undertaker. It's an open and honest look into funeral service brought to you by Golden Gate Funeral Home and Crematory with facilities in Fort Worth, Texas, Dallas, Texas, and Tallulah, Louisiana. I'm your host, John Beckwith Jr. I'm joined today by my sister, our pre need and insurance specialist, Miss Charlotte Beckwith. Hello, everybody. We have my sister, our chief financial officer, my partner, Sister Carolyn Hank. Good morning, everybody. And we have our chief film director, Via Ellis County, now Tarrant County, Chief Kevin Hank. Hello, everyone. All right, y'all know we have a different format now. First of all, we have more of a reality show where you're going to get to know the Beckwith family as well as we're going to educate the public on funeral services. We're going to do everything we can to make the transition uh, from life to debt and more important, <laughs> the people who has to deal with your debt to try to make it easier for them. Remember, we have seven basic things we're going to talk about every week. Number one is pre-need. Number two is insurance. Number three is last will and testament. Number four, we understand everything doesn't lead to debt, so you need a living, living will. will. Also, we're going to talk about make sure you have a payable on debt on every bank account and make sure there's one person in charge of your funeral. Mm -hmm. It's called a right of disposition. And also, we're going to make sure that we hit, make sure there is a letter of last, last instruction. instruction. Let's get started. What are we talking about today? We're going to talk about words left unsaid. Mm -hmm. Words left unsaid. Now, everybody on the panel has had the opportunity, and I want to know if I want to call the opportunity to sit on the front row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's many things that we look back on and what we call, uh, uh, what we call it on uh, Monday, a Monday, Monday uh, quarterback. quarterback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you, when in the game, an armchair quarterback. Mm -hmm. When the game is over, you want to call, always come back and say what we should have done. done. When someone passes away, we have that same situation. Uh, where we look back and say, what I should have said. Yeah. There's always going to be words left unsaid when someone passes away. And it's interesting because it put us in a position where our words remain forever unsaid. Mm. So it's like, if I forget to tell uh, Charlotte something today, I get to come back later and say, let me call her and tell her, listen, I, I can't think of exactly what I want to say. Uh, don't worry, it'll come back to you okay, later. Yeah. And when it does... Uh, you know, hit me, and then we're going to get this thing worked out. Y'all, when someone passes away, it is too late. It's too late. Mm -hmm. I, I say this quite often when you come to a funeral. If you come to say goodbye, you're too late mm -hmm. because they are already gone. Um, how often do we hear great remarks at funerals? How often do we hear how great lovely. the person was or, or how they poured into their life or into your life? And the bottom line, they can hear, listen, <laughs> if I'm in heaven, if I'm absent from the body, present with this, Paul oh, said in 2 Corinthians, if I'm there, do I really want to hear what's going on here? I can tell people, I'll say, they're watching you, they listen. listening. Come on, if I was listening, you'll stress me out. Of <laughs> when I get there, I ain't trying to find out what y'all doing down here. Any words left unsaid are words left unsaid. Now, this one, we know we changed it to like reality. So we have our brother in law that's on here with us for the very first time since we've changed our format. format. So let's kind of do a little review. We talked about dad. Mm -hmm. We talked about the founder, the owner of Golden Gate Funeral Home, where he came from, right. how he got here. And you can go back and watch the show. Then the next week we talked about mom. Right. Mm -hmm. We got to talk about some things that she went through and some of the things that Charlotte uh, went mm -hmm. through right. uh, with her. So we have some more people on our reality show today. So let's talk a little bit <laughs> about them. So let's talk a little bit about Kevin today. Yes. Now we talked a little bit about Carolyn and how Carolyn matured earlier <laughs> and how we stayed in our house. So I want to introduce you all to Kevin Hanks. And now listen, he's going to get to read a resume on here. Mm. Let's just get that straight, y'all. Let's take count of party. We're going to be open and we're going to be honest. honest about that. First of all, a lot of people, what they don't know about Kevin is, Kevin is married to my sister. So guess what's the first thing come to your mind? The only reason he's here is because he married into our family. So let's talk about that. How long have you been married to my sister? I've been married to your sister for 22 years. So for 22 years, a lot of people think it's something overnight that just happened. For 22 years, they've been married, like legally married for 22 years. That's a long time. Now, how long have you worked at Golden Gate Funeral? All right, so that's been uh, 27, right at uh, this month will be 28. 
So for six years, mm -hmm. you worked at Golden Gate Funeral Home, not being married to Carol. That's right. You actually worked here before Carolyn ever worked, even got a job. Is that correct? Before she came on the scene. Okay, good. I just want people to know that. So a lot of people say, oh, yeah. And I'll say this is my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. But understand that Kevin and I had a relationship before he ever even met my sister. He was already working at Golden Gate Funeral Home back when we were in Wasahatchee, right. Texas. Exactly. Then we went to Beckley. Exactly. And we went from Beckley to St. Mary. Yes. And from St. Mary to Lancaster. Well, we opened a Fort Worth location, the Louisiana location, and where we are now, Kevin has been with us the entire time. Mm -hmm. So you're not just some guy that tried to marry into the family. <laughs> right? You've been here for a little while. So I have a guy off the street, but I did. <laughs> but, I did <laughs> but I did bring something to the table. Bring something to the table. Y'all listen, I want to tell y'all, first of all, when I, went, I met Kevin, I didn't know his name for about 10 years. Because my dad never gave people names. Anybody that's watching me, I uh, may have worked here at Golden Gate Funeral Home before. My dad gives everybody a nickname. He don't even try to remember your name. He names everybody. He named him Sheriff. Mm -hmm. That was his name. That was his name for at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. His name never was Kevin. His name was Sheriff. Sheriff. Why was he called Sheriff? Because he was a deputy sheriff when he started working. For Golden Gate County. You definitely sure for what? For who? It was for the Ellis County Sheriff's Department there in uh, Waxahachie, Texas, you know, where Golden Gate Funeral Home was at the time. And started. Uh, that's that's started. the home of Golden Gate Funeral Home. Right there on Main and MLK or something. What is, what is it Maine called? And White. Now? Yeah. Maine and White. Maine and White. Now it's called MLK. <laughs> yes, right. Maine changed the name to MLK. MLK. So uh -huh. that's where we started from. You were a deputy sheriff. Yes, sir. So you should just come by. I don't know that we called 911 or something. How you end up there? No, uh, just uh, from. You know, my family was in the funeral business as well, uh, but I, I just started coming by and just hanging around and, and you know, just kind of just trying to see what was going on. And, and then your dad would come by and, you know, he would come by the sheriff's office. and He loved law enforcement. Oh, yeah. His dad loved law enforcement. Yes. If you're watching this here, law enforcement, you know he loved law enforcement. Yeah. So he immediately going to gravitate you because you're a deputy sheriff. He sure. did. And, you know, and I'd always heard these warnings that, you know, that, Stay away from this guy, this Beckless man. He's he's ruining funeral business. You know, right. he has these six hundred dollar funerals. And, you know. and listen, that was true too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we was on the public side, not the undertaker side. Mm -hmm. We'll have undertaker conventions. We'll have undertaker meetings, and undertakers will tell you how to treat the public mm -hmm. instead of us listening to the public on how they want to be treated. And that's how we became number one. We started listening to undertakers. And start listening to the public. Okay. Dad has never listened to Undertaker because they never want to accept him as one anyway. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, we just kind of just started hanging out together, and he says, "Hey, I want to, you know, I want to take you up, and I want to introduce you to everybody, and, and we want you to be a part of the team." How old were you? Uh, I was 20, mm -hmm. 21, 22. 21, yeah. 22 yeah. years old, and you are still, mm -hmm. you're still here. Mm -hmm. So you become a Deputy Sheriff, that means you've been to a police academy, you passed a Texas Commission on Law Enforcement examination, but you also went to Mortuary College. I did. So now you're a licensed funeral director in the state of in the state of Texas. In the state of Texas. So it's not like we hired him just because he was a deputy <laughs> sheriff. Mm -hmm. And we didn't bring him in just because he married our <laughs> sister. <laughs> but listen, you have to know a little bit about Kevin Haynes. Mm -hmm. He grew up in a funeral home just like we did. That's right. What funeral home? It was uh, Jones Funeral Home in Ennis, Texas. I was in business for about 50 years, a uh, business that my uncle started uh, back in those times, and, and we pretty much took care of uh, Ellis County during those 50 times. 50 years ago, your uncle opened a funeral home. So you grew up in a funeral business just like you I did, yeah. and you've been around this all your life. So people might say, why is he the chief operating officer of Fort Worth, Texas? First of all, he has his whole life experience. Mm -hmm. Second of all, he is a licensed funeral director. Mm -hmm. Third of all, he's been here for 28 years. Mm -hmm. At what point did you get promoted? <laughs> <laughs> right. I might can trust him. And then he just happened to marry my sister. So let's get a new Kevin Haynes. <laughs> so when I say Chief Haynes, it's the reason why I say Chief Haynes, because Kevin has always excelled in his life. He went from being deputy sheriff to being chief of police for two police departments. So, of course, if somebody can be promoted to chief of police, surely they can be the chief operating officer at a funeral yeah. home. And we still lean on his uh, law enforcement mm -hmm. experiences. He still does mm -hmm. the background checks here for us. And mm -hmm. I call him every day and we shoot that off of each other. So that's something we have in common. We both went to Marchwork College and we both went to the 
police academy. But then, listen, y'all, I tell y'all, Kevin always excelled. Kevin went from going to the police academy to actually being the instructor at the police <laughs> academy. So who did you teach? Who's some of the people you think they'll recognize? Well, actually, uh, I actually had the opportunity to uh, teach Constable Tracy Gully. So my boss now, yes. you taught her in the police academy. Y'all want to understand how long ago that was. How many years was that? Oh, that had to be in the... Over 20 something. Yeah, years. that had to be in the mid-90s. Uh, yeah, it was probably the mid-90s. Uh, she and uh, Michael Beckwith. Uh, so Michael Beckwith, which is now lieutenant, mm -hmm. has been on the police force. Let's see, I've been there 27 years. He's been there 25 years. Mm -hmm. So you was teaching in the police academy yes. over 25, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I just want y'all to know that we have the real deal here. <laughs> Not just because he married my <laughs> that he's in this position, but Golden Gate is the best, especially Fort Worth, Tarrant County. You can entrust your loved one because you have to understand the person we got in charge. Mm -hmm. He is the real deal. Welcome to the family. <laughs> <laughs> After 20-something. So I just want to make sure these words are not left unsaid. Mm -hmm. So this is important now. So when we go to Kevin's funeral, and it may happen, and I get up and tell that story, Kevin won't hear. But today on this reality show, today on Ask I'm going to take a Kevin Hurt. We discuss that as a individual. Mm -hmm. No words left unsaid. No words un left unsaid. The reality, uh, Sean, is if it's something you need to say to Kevin, when you need to say it. Right now. Right now. If you want to compliment him on his uh, accomplishments and the position he's in, when do you need to say that? Right now. And what would stop me from doing that? I got three things, y'all. Some people just don't have the courage to say it. Mm. Carol, you ever seen that before? Some things yes, you need yes. to say to your mom. Uh-huh. But you just wasn't brave enough to say it, right? Because of our, <laughs> because our relationship, who she is. But not just your mama, y'all. People do that in life. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Things are left and unsaid. Mm -hmm. Think of a situation you think that you should have said something to mama, and he's like, "Wait a minute, I have too much respect for it. something you need to say to Kevin." Is you haven't said, or maybe your brother or your sister, mm -hmm. where courage came into the play. Well, I think one thing with mama and. I mean, that's who she was. Our mom was a really soft-hearted person. Mm -hmm. So she would give, 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 give. So there were some things I always wanted to tell her. Mama, stop that. Stop doing that. I really see that it doesn't really help them. But I never said it because of who she is to me and who she was. To me. Out of respect for your mom. Yes. She was like, God has blessed me with a vision, mom. And I need to tell you. But I don't have the courage. Marriage. And this is what we call it, y'all, respect. Mm -hmm. You see, I have too much respect. But the bottom line is, is that everybody can pour into it. They say, have you ever heard of the words come out of a babe's mouth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the babe don't always have courage to give you what you need. Y'all, God will use a rock, mm -hmm. but he shouldn't have to. Mm -hmm. If God gives you something to say to somebody, have the courage to say it. To say it. Did you understand what I'm saying? Shall you have been in a situation where you just didn't have the courage to say something to somebody? Oh, yeah. I've been in this situation. A lot of it had to do with uh, courage and, and pride. You know, I was like, I, I don't know how they was going to accept it. So, mm -hmm. I so you got to be brave enough to, to say it. So you yeah, chose be, not to be. chose not to because mm -hmm. I didn't know, like I said, I didn't want to accept it. And um, it's a, a lot of my pride stood in the way. And I wish I would have because that was the last time. So what are we saying to those who are watching this? Ask the undertaker. Ask the undertaker. Have the courage have the to say it. Mm -hmm. Because there will be a time you won't mm -hmm. have the opportunity to have do it. You have to be brave enough mm -hmm. to say it. I'm not saying ever be disrespected. Please don't ever. Mm -hmm. I, that's not what Mr. Beck would say. That ain't what Mr. B said. That ain't what John Beck would John John Jr. Say said. Uh -uh. I said have courage mm -hmm. to tell someone don't leave words left unsaid. 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 Second thing that stops us from doing it, y'all ready? Time. Uh -huh. You're too busy, Kevin. Mm -hmm. You should have said it. And you know you should have said it. But you think work is more important than people. You think, man, I just don't have time. Do you, you agree? Have you ever seen, find yourself in a situation where you should have said something? And you know you should have, but you just didn't have time to pour it to a person. Oh, I tell you, and, and it's easily, easily, you know, to get caught up in a situation like that. I mean, you, you said a day, I mean, we were talking about this the other day. You know, we were up at 4 30, 5 o'clock. <laughs> we were on our way to work and we we're trying to talk on the phone, you know, and and, and, and say different things. It's just real easy to, you know, just get focused on what you're doing and then you think about it and it's too late. You know, that person is gone. You didn't get a chance to say it to them. You've just been hanging on to it. You know, the, the thought has been there, but you just never got it out. Now, if you're busy like most people are, y'all listen, sometimes I don't even get to finish a phone call. 
without getting another, another oh, phone call. Right. And y'all, listen, I have some great friends out there that I grew up with, that I went to school with. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I don't even get a chance to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. Because my day is scheduled from the time I wake up mm -hmm. to the time I go to bed. Mm -hmm. My day is scheduled. Mm -hmm. And in between that, I have a scheduled for the phone call to my friend. Mm -hmm. And then they die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or something happens. Mm -hmm. And guess what, Carol? Mm -hmm. I never took the time to say, to say anything mm -hmm. to them. A lot of my friends right now that I grew up with or whatever, they probably feel like, well, we're no longer friends with you because he has went somewhere else and I'm doing my own thing, you're doing your own thing. That is not the case. Mm -hmm. I love you just as much as I loved you then. Mm -hmm. I just don't have the time. time. And guess what, Carol? I need to start making, making time. time for people that are important to Most you. Most definitely. If you're a scheduling person, schedule the time, as he just stated. Uh, not only do they pass away, but the opportunity to say it passes away, whatever the situation is. And you didn't say it, and now the situation no longer exists. So let's schedule the time, if that's what you do. If not, make the time to make sure you say what needs to be said. Uh, Kevin and I went to a lecture at a funeral director's convention. I don't know if you remember that. The guy got up and uh, made the lecture. He got up and spoke about making time to call a friend. I mean, she, she had like a list of things. And one of the things on there is that you must call a friend every day. Mm. That was on the list. So right. I want to encourage those who's watching. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage those on the panel. Every day, call a friend. Mm. Right. You I say like to yourself, that. okay, I call Sean today. I'm going to call Wani tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call. Uh -huh. You understand? I'm going to call Gwen mm -hmm. tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to call Laura the next day. Mm -hmm. But you have to call at least one what friend a day. Mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Did that help anybody today? Oh, yeah. yeah. You really got me. to make the what you got. Make that time. And then, y'all, there's one time. more thing you have to understand. Some people don't say it. Not that they don't have the courage. And sometimes they do have the time. But guess what they can't do? It's yeah. communicate. Y'all, yeah. communication is one of the most difficult things in the world to do. Y'all, I know what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I just can't say yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And when I do say it, it, it comes out wrong. Yeah. I mean, it's like I, I want to tell you how I feel, but I don't know how. I, I want to tell you, Mom, that I, you need to do this, but I don't know how to approach a mom. Right. I want to tell Kevin how I feel, but I, I don't know how to communicate. Communication is the most difficult thing that we do. Mm -hmm. Y'all, sometimes a tone of my voice mm -hmm. could blow the whole communication. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes just walking in one minute late. Sometimes just, y'all, it's amazing what can, what can happen and that will cause us not to be able to communicate. communicate. It's what I'm wearing, how I approached you. It's not what I said. It's, it's mm -hmm. not even what I did. Mm -hmm. It's how I make you feel. feel. And if I don't know how to communicate, mm -hmm. Carol, uh, Charlotte, what I find myself doing is just not saying it at all. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know how, how to. I've never been taught how to communicate. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Oh, I absolutely agree with everything he said. I have this thing that's called presentation perception how people might perceive you and how you approach them. And sometimes, like me, I, I have a strong personality. And when I approach people, it's like they get like this right here because of the way I choose to communicate. So then I just shut down. I say, like uh, things be worse, get what? Left on Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, because it's like, wait, I scared down. you. You don't need nothing. Okay, wait. Oh, down. I, yeah. I, mean, I, I can't I have even that say what I needed I, to I, say. Right, right. I have that a lot. Words Sometimes I don't yes, say I it because I don't want to come across the wrong way. And I, it's something that should be said, but it's a little fear. Sometimes I have. Hey, we all I, do. We yeah. all have. Fear, and so man. I just choose to just to shut down. I think it's better just, just to shut down. And we say it's not okay, right? It's not. We're not going to have words left on It's not. Three things is going to make us angry. What's number one? We're gonna have some what? Some the courage. Courage mm -hmm. to actually say it. What was number two? Y'all remember Make number two? Time. Make some time <laughs> to say it. And then y'all check this out. With communication, it's just like playing basketball. It's just yes. like playing football. Right. It's just like playing any other sport. It's just like anything you do on your job, you got to practice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Communication, you're gonna get better at communication by right. practicing. Oh, this I'm getting ready to go talk to Charlotte. I'm gonna practice in a mirror while I'm getting ready to say. Mm -hmm. I can kind of imagine what she's gonna say back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Practice it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just practice. Right. Oh my god. I hope that helps somebody. It did. It now let me take these three things, y'all. <laughs> but I tell you number one thing is what? Carriage, you know what stop me from getting greedy? They don't have the courage to do it. Yes. It's free. Why haven't you done it? Because you don't have the courage to sit down and really talk about that you're going to actually pass away. Mm -hmm. You don't have the courage to come to your family and ask them, what do you want at your funeral? Mm -hmm. You're just scared to say it. You say, if I say it, 
It's yeah. gonna happen. It's gonna happen. And if I say it to myself, I'm gonna get sad. Mm -hmm. If I bring this up, y'all listen. I'm telling you now, if you have the courage to uh, say it, nobody gets sad. We only get sad after people mm -hmm. die. Mm -hmm. If we talk about death before, before. people die, nobody said, Yeah, I've done a million pre needs. <laughs> How many have you done? A million pre needs. Does anybody get sad at a pre need? The, they say every time they get finished, they say, oh, I, I feel great. I, they felt like that was the best thing they could have done. But like they never had shit. what to do it before. Then. They didn't have the courage because they're afraid of death. And no one want to talk about death, but death doesn't care. And so you get that courage to go ahead and plan these things out. You help your family. You also help yourself. So one of the reasons why 80% of the people that's listening to me right now, 80% of the people who's watching me right now, 80% of the people we deal with do not have a premium. Right. So eight out of 10 people that die, will come in here and have an insurance policy or cash mm -hmm. to pay for their funeral. Mm -hmm. Eight out of ten. Mm -hmm. It's only about two out of ten is actually going to happen and say, hey, this person I already picked out of everything. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something, y'all? Yeah. Eight out of ten? Yeah. Why is that number so high? We all know what we want in our funeral. Mm -hmm. If I say what you want in your funeral, you can tell mm -hmm. me like that. Mm -hmm. If I ask you what you want, you can just tell me what you want. Mm -hmm. All of us on the panel, y'all, everybody that's watching me yeah. right now know you want to be cremated, you know you want to be buried. You know what color you like. You could tell your whole family right now what you want at your funeral. Mm -hmm. The only reason you have it because you didn't have, have the courage to do it. Mm -hmm. That's the number one reason. The reason why you don't have insurance, the proper amount, because you just never have the courage to go purchase it. Mm -hmm. You never have the courage to just what? Mm -hmm. Sit down with an insurance agent and say, this is my budget, make it happen. Because mm -hmm. right. Charlotte. Carol, <laughs> when Carol. you get the courage, <laughs> you gonna do it. Yeah, so you got to have some courage. courage. The only reason you have not done a last will and testament, no you don't have the courage. You don't have the courage. And another thing, you don't realize how important a last will and testament is because you believe that assets is is, is a materialistic thing, but assets can be your children, it can be your mother. So a last will and testament is very important that you write this information down because we don't know what you're thinking. And do we have the courage to do it? Are you really are you really brave enough to make a decision who's gonna get what? See, what you do is you just left it unsaid. Mm -hmm. So let them let them out. work it out. You just ain't brave enough to say, Shower's gonna get it, you ain't. Right. Mm -hmm. And the only reason you ain't making decisions because you ain't brave enough to make mm -hmm. it. Let them fight over it. The only reason you're saying it is because you're not brave enough to decide who's gonna get it. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, somebody's saying, Boy, I'm brave. I'm, I got courage. Well, come on with it then. That's right. Come on, get a pre -meet. Make sure you Make sure you have an insurance policy in the right amount and make sure you have a. Last that if you one. are brave, mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. And y'all, listen, I have no financial gain from you doing those three things. Mm -hmm. You say, wait a minute, John. If I came and bought a pre need from you, you make not one dollar? No. Check this out. If you pay cash for it, if you pay it completely out, y'all, not one of those dollars going to my bank account. Not one. Mm -hmm. The only way I ever get paid is somebody has pass. to be deceased. When you pass. Y'all, pre need, I don't make one dime. You say, wait a minute, you don't make a dime off a of pre need? Why do you keep talking about it? Because I know how much easier it is on a family. Mm. That's the reason we talk about it. This is a community service. Golden Gate Film is not allowed to keep $1 of your money. Right. That's all placed in a separate situation with an insurance company. <laughs> it never touches my account. He pushed free need because he's trying to make some money. No, I'm not. I would not make $1 off of you with a free need. Most of the time, I lose. Mm. Because I froze a price 20 years ago, and I have to honor it 20 years later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want you to walk in there with a big insurance policy. Because yeah. I'll make a lot more money more off money. of it. Mm -hmm. But God is not going to bless me if I don't bless you. Mm -hmm. And the blessing is, I'm telling you, you need yeah, a you know. premium. Pre I want you to get an insurance, not because I want you to come spend fifty dollars or $100,000 on a funeral. I want you to get insurance because I hate to see your kids a year later or five years later at the grocery store, and they can't buy the groceries. Mm -hmm. I don't hate to run back into your spouse later on and then I got kicked out of the house. Mm -hmm. I picked you up from. Mm -hmm. you, you still ain't got it. I don't mm -hmm. hate to run back into your kids and they can't finish college mm -hmm. because you didn't leave enough money for the tuition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a community service and you got to have the courage to do that. Oh, I got another reason why you ain't got pre need insurance and last will and testament. Okay. You ain't took the time to, to do, do it. it. When you gonna I take time it, to do I'll it? I'll do it though? tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Come on, you I, can watch that. My day, my day is long. too full. Like, I've got to do this. You've been watching Ask on Tech for 15 years. We you've been, you've yes. been on, uh, you've, you've heard us on Heaven Name right. for 15 years. Mm -hmm. You saw us on CBS for 15 years, and you still haven't got it. Exactly. When you going to make 
time to do it. When you gonna make you, some? You got to just stop right there. Go ahead, my right. I gotta move some stuff around. You know? No, no. <laughs> just time, time, yeah. and what? Come on. Uh, a lot of people think it's complicated, but you can always go online to pull up a last one and tell you who can go to an office before an office store, mm -hmm. and they have it in a packet. And it's it going to get you started, exactly. mm -hmm. and then I need you to go see an attorney. Yeah. No, why you ain't get your pregnant? No, because you keep talking about you ain't got, got time. I ain't got time to be calling Charlotte. I ain't got time to be stopped by that fear home. I ain't got time to be picking out no fear home. I got to go to work. Time, time, time. And all of a sudden, time is gone. Mm -hmm. yes. And here's your family suffering. Mm -hmm. You ain't took time to take out insurance. You're going to wait till you get sick. And you're not going to be able to get what you need. Mm -hmm. And then you can't get what you need. All of a sudden, you're going to wait till you get older. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then what you could have paid, very little money for it. You paid a lot more. Because you wasted time. time. Y'all, number three was communication. Mm -hmm. The reason why you don't have a pre-need, because you don't know who to ask. Mm -hmm. You say, I watch the show, I listen to the show, but who do I call? Check out this sale number. Y'all ready? Go. 214 Slow it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna write it down well, I just... because I need the communication. <laughs> You're gonna start off with a 214 error code. We brag about being in Dallas because I'm from the 214. Mm -hmm. I got a 214 hat for Dallas Cowboys and I got a 214 hat for the Dallas Mavericks. I work to the game because what error code I'm in? 214. <laughs> That's Dallas, baby. And I'm bragging about the 214. Michael Beckwith is calling us in another show. It's the reason why. Mike, go. <laughs> Michael calling us right now to let me know that he has been double blessed. Listen, y'all, you might say to yourself, you're in the middle of a reality show. Why don't you answer Michael Beckwith's call? Because this is Michael Beckwith. This is Michael Beckwith. Not only is he family, he is the chief operating officer of Golden Gate Funeral Home in Tallulah, Louisiana. So not only do we service Texas, yeah. but we also service Louisiana, Louisiana with a facility there. And it's the Michael Beckwith. <laughs> we're going to bring him on the show. We're going to introduce you. <laughs> and we're going to get it worked out. We love you, Michael. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him again. Where were you? Shout out to 214. All right. What's the next three number? Okay, I'm going to start off. No, no, 214. We got 214. Okay, 863. Stop for a second. Eight, a six, and a three. Mm -hmm. Okay, eight, let's see, eight. Minus two is six. Then minus three more is three. So eight, six, three. Go. Nine, zero, zero, two. That's an easy one. That's easy. Ninety, oh, two. Mm -hmm. Eight, six, three. Nine, nine zero, 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 two. Now, how do I punch that into Facebook so they can see it? Can you go out there and come in? Can I come in from my phone? Come here. Come in on my phone. <laughs> because I want them to have that. This is what you love by reality. There you go. <laughs> you want to go out there and reply. 214-863-9002. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. Because you're gonna and then you say, listen, no more excuses of not having something because you can't communicate. Because I'm getting ready to put you on a what? Facebook. What I'm getting ready to do? Facebook? I'm gonna put that number on Facebook. I'm getting ready to put that number out there so you can see it. Mm -hmm. So it has been posted. Just in case you ever need it in the no reason not to communicate. No Shawn sells two things. Mm -hmm. She sells insurance, mm -hmm. every type of insurance. Mm -hmm. Term life, whole life, universal life. Mm -hmm. Any type of insurance you need, guarantee, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you're sick, whatever. Sick, let's let you know, even if you're sick, some people think because they're sick, they mm -hmm. can't get insurance, but you can get insurance even if you're sick. And Pastor Eton came on with us all yes. the time and yes. always said yes. the reason he was able to get insurance because he listened to this. Yeah, she sure. was actually a part of the panel and went and bought some insurance. insurance because he knows that. Now we can communicate. Mm -hmm. You don't know much about pre-need. only thing I know is what he talks about a few times on his show. Yeah, I got a pre-need specialist. Mm -hmm. Or you can actually call me direct. Yeah, who loves to do the ass? I'm going to take a show 24-7. It's me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can call me to your church. Won't cost you a dime. I'd be more than happy to talk to everybody there. Mm -hmm. You can call me to your company. You can call me to your house. You can call me as soon as COVID's over. You can call me just about <laughs> anywhere. And I'll be more than happy to do a... <laughs> A reality show. Yes. You want to do a reality show with John Beckwith? You got it. No charge. You want to do an ass on take a show with John Beckwith? You got me at. And y'all, listen, I'll make them come with me. I'll make them all get in my G Wagon yeah, right over there with yes, me. I'll, I'll bring the whole panel if that's what you want. <laughs> but I don't want you not to get it because lack of and the communication. communication. Anybody better today? Much. Because of what we went over? Yes. Tell me why. Somebody will not have a living will. With COVID going on, mm -hmm. 
mm. with strokes going on, mm. heart with attack. heart attacks. Yeah. Why wouldn't somebody have a, uh, a living will? What was the number one thing we learned today? Was no, what? courage. Just don't have the courage to do what? To do it. Now, when you okay. say courage, what is, what is it that I have to do with a living will? How, how, what is it? What is it that I need to do? Now, now that I learned I got to have some courage, <laughs> tell me, Carol, what I got to do? You simply have to write it down. Again, you get an attorney for any complications in your life. But as Charlotte stated, all of these forms are available. Some online for free. Some you have to go to an uh, office depot store or office yeah, store to get them. But they are available to you. Your very first step is to write it down, to know what you want done with you when you cannot speak for yourself. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, period. I hope they can hear you over my. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Everybody else is a dumb person with a smart phone. <laughs> It'll go off in the middle of church. <laughs> Anybody ever done it besides me? You got a feeling that the gray side of the phone ring, and you just ignoring everybody because you don't want them to think it's you. You do know that. So they they know it's how I'm going. I was just admiring my sister. I was just, she just kept on going. Oh, yeah, like, like I'm the brother playing <laughs> <laughs> too much. That's what and you she just kept going. Thing. That's what you call. You got it down. <laughs> I hope they heard that. Living will. Now listen. <laughs> People won't do living with because of courage, and they won't do it because of, come on, time. 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 I just don't have time. time. So what you going to do, wait till you get sick to do it? Mm -hmm. You're going to yeah. wait till you have a stroke to do it because you can't talk. Mm -hmm. You're going to wait till you have a heart attack to do it. Mm -hmm. When you plan mm -hmm. on doing the living, well, yeah. I mean, when you going to learn how it's to do it? Because it's like, mm -hmm. I, and the reason I ain't doing the living with Jonathan, I don't know how. Mm -hmm. You said, listen, first I'll start off with your friend, which is good. Mm -hmm. Start off with them. Mm -hmm. You say, I can't afford an attorney. Yeah, there's actually some things out there you can use. Yeah. Now, there's actually some free legal advice, advice out there. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of who's my friend? Google. Google. Siri. Who else? <laughs> uh, Alexa. Alexa. <laughs> who else? Y'all use that because now where we used to have to run to a library and do uh, uh, all types research, of research, and all that, that, that is no longer the case. Mm -hmm. I put everything in. Uh, uh -huh. That I can't spell, I put it in spell. Mm -hmm. I just say, Sir, Siri, spell so and so. Mm -hmm. And they do it for me. Mm -hmm. Y'all, we have all these devices. We have to take so punch speaks. up today, living with. Mm -hmm. you like, I have no idea how you punch it up. Oh, yeah. How long did it take? Uh, seconds. And seconds. Just how much popped up? And it says free living will template. Okay, right there here. we go. So All let's talk about it. it. Now you got the courage to do it. Mm -hmm. Let's Google it. Now yeah, take the uh, time. 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 How much time did it take? Like said, and and oh, I, the reason I don't up. do it because I don't know how to communicate. This is what I need. And we're saying it's right there in mm -hmm. front of you. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who don't do Google, go get your grandkids. Now, two-year-old Googles now, okay. <laughs> they can talk, they can Google. Yes. And I'm saying take advantage. Now, you can finally put these kids to use. Right. Than, you know, back in the day, she used us to change the channel. Right. Y'all don't know nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> know about that. I know about, know about it. it. <laughs> and then when they broke, if you like the Beckler family, we had wire <laughs> You don't know nothing about no wire flyers and the antenna. <laughs> Oh, they thought we were going with a silver spoon. Yeah, they did. Okay, anyway. Vice grip. Yeah, vice grip. What you yeah. know about that? <laughs> don't start that. Don't start that. So on the living wheel, we've got to make sure we have, come on, you guys. Come on. Time. Time. Time to do it. And, and we communicate. We communicate. Right. All right, y'all. At this time, we're going to pray for the families <laughs> who entrusted their loved one with us <laughs> and has moved on to their reward. Miss Carolyn. Mr. Jean Johnson, Miss Alice Smith, Miss Emma Dixon, Mr. Lonnie Johnson, Mr. Ross Brewer, Mr. Kevin Abraham, Miss Billy Jean Mangrum, Miss Joyce Jones, Mr. Frederick Kirby, Miss Deborah Grays, Mr. Kenneth Williams, Miss Rosemary Hurst, Miss Ernestine Cook, Mr. Davis Truillo, Miss Lillian Caldwell, Mr. Tycorius Jordan, Miss Phyllis Washington, Miss Margaret Chapman, Miss Georgia Walker, Mr. Johnny Robinson, Mr. Elsie Ware, Miss Annette Scott Holland, Mr. Timothy Franklin Jr. Mr. Timothy Geary, Mr. Johnny Buckley, Miss Felicia Carraway, Miss Shirley Paramore, Miss Lillian Alexander, Dr. Dennis Duncans Sr., Mr. Shauna Harris, Mr. Christopher Collier, Mr. Miguel Ruiz, 
Miss Sol Ta Tran, Miss Frances Pickens, Mr. Sir John Brigham, Miss Mr. Bora Brigans, Evangelist Billy Walker, Miss Hilda Brooks, Miss Ruth Hubbard, Mr. Ronald Taylor, Mr. Andrew Kenny Sr., Mr. Ernest Williams, Mr. James Johnson Jr., Mr. DeMarco Robertson, Mr. Kevin Hare, Miss Annette Murphy, Miss Dora Hall, Miss Kay Johnson, Miss Gloria Sharp, Miss Patricia Wright, Miss Group Miss Ruth Hillary, Miss Laura Johnson, Miss Ovilla Reed, Pastor Cedric Strickland, Mr. Theopolis Andrew, Mr. Laron Kenny, Miss Cynthia Griffin, Mr. Jose Laura, Mr. Charles Latch, Miss Eva Davis, Miss Juanita Eurista, Miss Ernestine Hall, Mr. Paul Love, Mr. Edward Sledge, Mr. Freddie Jeffers, Miss Julia Lewis, Miss Alfreda Terrell, Mr. Cleveland Joyner, Mr. Allen Hill, Miss Janice Godfrey, Mr. Ronald Phillip, Mr. MacArthur Sparks Jr., Miss Deja Gibson, Mr. Allen Wallace, Miss Pamela Willis, Miss Shirley Edwards, Mr. Bobby Taylor, Miss Ella Childress, Mr. Allen Dupree, Mr. Adam McSpalden, Miss Sharon White, Mr. Kenneth Price, Miss Dietra Weaver, Miss Candace Grays, Miss Barbara Starks, Miss Hortense Estrada, Miss Miss Sammy Jackson, Miss Benita Creighton, Mr. Artis Washington, Mr. Racine Collins, Miss Martha Atkins, and Miss Etha Haslett. Deacon Hayes. Dear God, our Father, we come now. We thank you for this day. We thank you for yet another opportunity to call upon your name and Father, we thank you for the opportunity to serve. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who suffered, bled, hung, and died for us. Father, we thank you for our founder, our owner, Dr. Johnny Beckler Sr., for the vision that you gave him and that he has poured into our lives as we uh, continue to carry this on. And prayerfully, we will pour into others. Now, Father, there were many names that were uh, called, those who have been called to rest in paradise with you. And Father, we're praying for those families and that they will have understanding, that they will have comfort, and that they will have strength. Father, again, we just thank you for all that you've done and all that you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That's old school deacon there. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have praise and worship in this church. They have devotion. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, the, 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 the open and honest look into <laughs> funeral services, but also the Beckwith Family. Family. A lot of times people wonder who owns Golden Gate Funeral Home. Yeah, I was asked that by someone, this is no exaggeration, that I've known for over 35 years. Oh my. But they never had the courage to ask. ask me. And then he finally says to me the other day, as I said in his office, he says, who owns Golden Gate Funeral Home? Mm. So we have to answer that every week. Y'all listen, it's only three owners of Golden Gate Funeral Home. Mm -hmm. It's John Beckwith Sr. A lot of people think he's deceased. He is yet alive. Yes. John Beckwith Sr. and I worked a funeral together the other day at the Cowboys, home of the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Stadium. Check out my Facebook. You go back and see a picture of him. He's yet alive. He is still an owner of Golden Gate Funeral Home. The other two owners are sitting like <laughs> right, right here. here. <laughs> That's the third three and a third. I'm a third three. Now, we have never been owned by anybody else. No, sir. The only <laughs> other person that has ever owned Golden Gate is Aileen Beckwith. And she's now deceased. Right. So we have what's called, you just want to get in our business, a buy-sell agreement. Right. So when mom passed away, her shares automatic for one dollar goes to Carolyn, <laughs> me, and dad. Right. If dad passed away today, his shares will automatic goes to Carolyn and I. If Carolyn passed away today, dad and I would automatic 
receive our shares. It don't go to our kids. It can't go to mines. It can't go to anyone else. It would only be these owners until the end of us. We have never sold out. Never have. Never will. Family owned and operated. Oh, yes, African American. But I know we like skin. But African American. <laughs> yes. Family owned and operated. operated. Yes, sir. It's Golden Gate Funeral Home, the family owned, operated. Back with family that brings you ass on the ticket. Nobody else. And we ain't sold out. Nope. We have not so, and y'all listen. Our competitor love telling that lie. Yes. Oh, oh they love that lie, yeah. don't they? Yeah. To the point where people prefer a lie the over truth. the truth. Yes. Y'all check this out. Whoever owns a fear home is public record. You want to know who owns Lunar Land? It's public record. No, seriously. Google it. If you want to know who owns <laughs> Lincoln, <laughs> it's public. You want to know who owns Singing Hills? You want to know who owns Restland? You want to know who owns Sparkman Hill Crest? It is. Public, public record. record. You want to know who owns Golden Gate Funeral Home? Public it is public public. record. Y'all, the people that want to get to me, they y'all already know who owns Golden Gate Funeral Home. <laughs> Why you don't know? Right. The state <laughs> controllers know who owns Golden Gate Funeral Home. Yes, Why you don't know? When they get ready to serve me a court paper, they know exactly who owns Golden Gate. <laughs> they never listen to the competitors. <laughs> they do their research to see who actually owns. Oh. Y'all, it's amazing. I just rather prefer a lot mm -hmm. in a room. Over the truth. Does it sound better? Is it because I have 62 limousines mm. that, of course, a black man can't own 62 limousines? Right. Yeah. Maybe because I have 40 hearses. Mm. That's the problem. Because any black man can't own 100 cars, can he? Yeah. You can't pass by this and say that's actually owned by black people. No way. Not this and the one in Fort Worth and the one in Louisiana. Uh -huh. No way in the world. Black people can't be successful in business for 40, 40 years. years. Oh, family owned and operated? No, don't you know the second generation always mess it up? Mm -hmm. If they don't, the third generation mess it up for you. No way. I rather pref I prefer to listen to a rumor and a lie wow. than to just say black folks can be successful in funeral business. It's two things black folks got down. I want y'all to hear this. Funeral business and church. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Y'all, we good at that. Yes. <laughs> I just want to let you know. You go into a white church, you need your butt whoop as a black person. Right. Can you say that out loud? Yes. yes. You're using a white fear home. You need your, I ain't going to say that. But listen to me. We good at church, and we good at funeral business. And we can cook. Yes. You ain't never got to go to a white restaurant. Right. Oh, did I say it out loud? Yes. Hey, I can say it because it's my show. <laughs> That's what you know I ain't on my white folks. Right. Because they ain't got nobody I got to answer to. <laughs> We talking about words left unsaid. Did I leave any unsaid this time? Did I have any courage in saying them? Yes. Did I take my time in saying it? And did I communicate it very well? Good. Okay. So we talked about greedy. We talked a little bit about insurance. We talked a little bit about a last will. Really says my sister's over here died. They say he crazy. Yeah. Y'all, I've been crazy for a long, long time. time. We talked about having a payable on death on every mm -hmm. bank account. We're saying be brave enough to walk in that bank mm. and tell them to put somebody's name on this account and not as a come on, John. Joint account. Not a joint account holder. Just when I die, they're gonna be able to walk in here and get my money. Take the time to do that. Yes. And listen, you might say, I don't know what to say. Just walk in there. They know they exactly know. what you're talking about. They know. They know exactly. The communication won't be an issue. Right. Just be brave enough to go do it and take the time to go right. do it. Y'all be brave enough to do a right of disposition. Mm -hmm. Y'all listen, I know that's difficult because I have several children. Ain't none of y'all in charge of my funeral. Did you hear how brave I was no. on that? No. Jack is in charge of my funeral. I love y'all. Listen, y'all, I got to say this right now. I got to say congratulations to my daughter. She called yesterday, y'all. She passed the ball. All oh, right. right. Y'all, the first she time around, she is All now right. a licensed attorney. You got to take an oath or something. Mm -hmm. But she is now that is licensed awesome. attorney. Right. Congratulations. She Congratulations. The Congratulations, the Tristan. The first time around, she passed the ball. That's right. awesome. Isn't that something? Oh, my God. And listen, she ain't hey. in charge. She's a whole attorney now. <laughs> but she ain't in charge of my fear. Mm. She can come to the fear. Mm. But she ain't in charge of the fear. Because okay. I'm brave enough to have a right of disposition say Jack is in charge. All right. Did you hear me? It doesn't matter that you got a master's degree from NYU town. Mm. It don't matter <laughs> when if you got a master's degree from USC. Who's in charge of my film? Yeah, These I got some really me. smart children, y'all. They've been blessed. Carolyn paid for all their tuition. <laughs> you know I'm in University of Texas, undergrad, 
One of them went on to NYU, mm -hmm. got a master's. Another undergrad from UT went on to become a lawyer from USC. Mm -hmm. They kind of blame all of them. <laughs> but none of them in charge of my film. One of them went to Spelman. Graduated from Spelman, then went to USC and got a master's. Mm -hmm. But he, she's not in charge. I am brave enough to say right now, I have enough courage to say who's in charge. Mm -hmm. Jack is in charge. Mm -hmm. And I'm brave enough, and I took the time to do the right of uh, right. And I can communicate that. This Jack ain't got to argue with you. Why are you going to go back and forth with an attorney? When you just hand him a piece of paper. <laughs> they say, I have the right of, yeah, I got a son that has my name say, and he ain't in charge. Did you hear what I, I said? There he got you. my name say, and he ain't in charge. Y'all don't understand. I got another daughter who graduated from Texas a and Commerce. Y'all just been working in film business for 12 years. That graduated from Mortuary College. That's a licensed film director working with her daddy every day. And she ain't in charge. She ain't in charge of my, she ain't got nothing to say. Sit down and be a daughter. Because Jack is in charge. You got to be brave enough. I'd like to say something about that because what I'm finding out as a premium agent is that the people they don't want to hurt their children feel they ain't brave enough to hurt they are not, but what you talking about they, <laughs> they would have to communicate they have to be have courage to pick out who they know is gonna be the person that's going to do the right thing by them mm -hmm. get a right of disposition mm -hmm. and do not worry about what the other child is gonna say you know the be one brave enough gonna, yes be brave enough yes. and take the time to do it. To and communicate with you. this right of disposition. You got to help me out, doctor. Dude, is that important? Is that you be brave enough to do a right disposition? Yeah, you have to be. I mean, and I and I've seen it done mm -hmm. many different ways. You know, I, I've seen someone that is totally not connected to the family end up being the right of disposition yes. for, for someone, and it worked out beautifully mm -hmm. uh, because the family understood understood that this person took out the time to fill out this uh, form themselves, and they listed everything and that they wanted put the pre-need in place, everything, had the right of disposition listed, and there was no confusion. And most people just don't have the courage because you have these big personalities in your family. Mm -hmm. So anybody that knows me now know I have evolved into this big personality. Now, my sister gets it naturally. My daddy just <laughs> put it in her through DNA. I didn't. I evolved into the person that I am. So you can have a person like my sister, Carol. She says, who's in charge of her family? You understand what I'm saying? Is the guy that's asked, I'm not taking charge of her film. Is the guy that's worked with her every day as a CEO in charge of her film? I'm in charge of thousands of films every year. And I mean thousands of them. But I'm not in charge of hers. And she got to be brave enough to say that and put that in writing. Because if you don't take the time to do it, my big personality will do what? And y'all, that's what happens in your family. The bully in the family becomes in charge. If you don't take the time or have the courage or know how to communicate this in writing, mm -hmm. the bully of the family would take charge. Well, I had a question uh, that I asked the yeah, out there. We want to ask: Do you have to let uh, people know that you have chose a certain person for your right of disposition? Most definitely not. That's the argument. That's you ain't got very to You do not even have to let them know. You can just let the person who has in, who's in charge just let them know. And y'all, you'd be surprised. It. Even the person who has it, most of the time, don't even have to use it. Mm -hmm. You just walk in the room, go in, make arrangements like you normally do. If the argument starts, mm -hmm. or if there's a situation, then it comes up. It's something you keep in your pocket mm -hmm. that you never have to even, maybe even show. Mm -hmm. If I'm a police officer the last 27 years, I don't always show my badge. Mm -hmm. It ain't none of your business I'm a police officer. Mm -hmm. So what do you got a gun on? It's supposed to be concealed at all times. That's what they taught us in the police academy. <laughs> I'm just the undertaker. When you see me in a store, when you see me at the movies, mm -hmm. I always have a gun on and a badge. It ain't none of your business. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now try me. <laughs> and let me have to introduce myself. Mm -hmm. That's what a right of disposition yes. is. Mm -hmm. The right of disposition is your badge and your gun. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to use it just because you but mm -hmm. ooh, it feels good to know I got it. Mm -hmm. It's a girl pulled up in my house yesterday, y'all. Behind me, a woman. I didn't know it was a woman at the time, but a car. I pulled up in my driveway, she pulled up behind me. Guess what I turned into? A police uh, officer. <laughs> I jumped out with my badge in my gun. Because uh -huh. I'm saying, just in case you got something on your mind, mm -hmm. it ain't going to be what you think. Mm -hmm. I know you think you pulled up on John Beck with the Undertaker, mm -hmm. but I had to introduce myself. John Beck with the Undertaker. I said, listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> I ain't getting ready to hurt you because you have great kids and all. Mm -hmm. I said, but listen, somebody else will kill you. Mm -hmm. You don't pull up in people. You, know, all right. you don't do that. You don't get on somebody else's property. property. Yeah, I had to introduce myself. Mm -hmm. Not as John the 
Okay. 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 But John, the police, police officer, officer. you never know what you're getting into. That's what that right disposition is. Mm -hmm. I wasn't scared she pulled up on me. I was in a wish I would. <laughs> because I had that right of disposition. Right. And that's how you need to be in funeral rights. Mm -hmm. I wish I would. I wish I mm -hmm. would. would. Y'all know what come in between. Right, that. right, right. I wish I would. <laughs> that right of disposition be your wish I would. Mm -hmm. It's like coming to a concert, somebody sitting in your seat. Mm -hmm. And you don't pay the hundred dollars for that ticket. Mm -hmm. I wish I would. Mm -hmm. And I ain't going to get no usher. <laughs> get out of my seat. <laughs> That's the right of disposition, right? Mm -hmm. Carolyn, where do I know to find this right of disposition? How do I know to find these insurance policies? And y'all, if we don't get nothing else across today, we get have to get across mm -hmm. that y'all listen, a last and will, a last will and testament that nobody knows where it is, is not a last will and testament. Right. An insurance policy and that no you one never one. file no is not an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. A bank account that you never gonna get the money out of is no not money. a bank account. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, I got to know where to find this thing. And that's our letter of last instruction. You simply tell your family everything they need to know. They need to know where all of these things are. They need to know the instructions you want carried out now that you no longer can do them. And you do that in that last letter of instruction. Start at the very beginning. You don't have to do it all today, but you need to get started on it. Take the time to start and tell your family everything. If I had a cell phone, I'd use mine for notes. What do you think you need to be writing your cell phone? You need to be writing down, you know, uh, other passwords and other, you know, codes and where keys are, your letter of instruction. Because, I mean, a lot of times if, if they find you somewhere, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to look at your phone to see if they can get some information. Who should I send that to? Okay, like I might send you, like last night I was going back and forth you guys on the conference call. And I kept sending you notes. I said, if it's updated, I'm going to send you a note. Yeah. How long did that take? And that only took seconds. And, then, and multiple people had it. So, you know, there wasn't a, you know, a Now, everybody in the world didn't get what I texted you yesterday. No. Only people I trusted got. Mm -hmm. Everybody didn't get what I texted you. Let me say that again. Only people I That's trust. People. So, as I get ready to make a change, all it is is I type in my phone mm -hmm. and I send it. Y'all, where is the bank? Mm -hmm. What is the bank account? Number. I'm only sending to people that ain't going to rob me. Right. Where is the safe? Mm -hmm. And what is the safe? Number I'm only going to send it to people that you ain't going to rob mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. How do I get in your house? That's what did you do with the, What's the code? Mm -hmm. But I'm only going to send the people I trust. Does that make sense? That makes, that makes a lot of sense. And it's just a push of a button. That's all it is. So you have to start taking notes. Mm -hmm. People say, listen, I don't know how to use no note thing. Y'all just text it. I bet you know how to text. Mm -hmm. You would be surprised who don't learn how to text. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody. <laughs> so what you do is you start texting things. Mm -hmm. Just put it in a text and send it to somebody. Send it to somebody that's a little smarter than you that knows how to put it in the note. Mm -hmm. And they'll send it back to you in a note form. Mm -hmm. Try your grandkids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm yeah. serious. Now you're going to finally come in handy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be more than happy to walk oh, through that little clip phone. You're they'll be more than happy to walk you through it. But we have to start telling folks where things are. Mm -hmm. Now listen, if the last will of testament in the wrong hands, it's going to get tore up. Yes, never. Okay. I'm just never. telling you. Yeah, it has to be more than a paper. It could get burned, it could yeah. get water mm -hmm. damage, it could just get thrown get away. Mm -hmm. It has to be electronically sent to some people you trust. Mm -hmm. So one of my best friends just happened to be my attorney. So we eat together about four times a week. Anybody see me uh, post on truth? All the time. So I go there at least four times a week. Okay. But people say, why do you go there? Uh, because the owner of truth mm -hmm. is Kevin, Kevin Kelly. Kelly. But Kevin Kelly and I have been hanging out for a lot longer than truth. Right. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But we're going to hang out if there is no Golden Gate funeral. Mm -hmm. We're going to hang out if there is no True, if there's no Kelly Law Firm. Mm -hmm. Kevin Kelly and I are friends. Y'all, you need to get you a friend. Mm -hmm. Somebody you can send some stuff yeah. to. Mm -hmm. That's outside of your immediate family. Because mm -hmm. he's not going to be prejudiced over Charlotte mm -hmm. or our Carolyn mm -hmm. or over Kevin. Mm -hmm. He has no interest mm -hmm. in what I'm leaving. Or my children right. or which one of the children. I, I've been blessed right. with some great children, but he has no interest on it. He doesn't have a favorite. Mm -hmm. I might have one. Mm -hmm. You might have one. Mm -hmm. You might have one, but he don't have one. Right. Find you somebody that you trust. Trust. Mm -hmm. And that's where that letter of last instructions need to go. Mm -hmm. So that somebody I trust know where everything is. Yes. You guys, of course, Jackie knows. Mm -hmm. But the possibility of something happening, Jackie and I at the same time is really high. Really high. She's on the same plane I'm on. Mm -hmm. She's on the same boat in Alaska that you was on. Mm -hmm. So no if the Titanic sinks, <laughs> probably Jack is going to be with me. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. If the house blow up because of the gas line, mm -hmm. how is she gonna blow up with me? Isn't that John Junior also? Mm -hmm. uh, you never know the person. John 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 well, his name is John Junior. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, this a family reality show. Okay, you told me to do my son. John Junior. Okay. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you never know what state John, of John. mind. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I make it one word, John Junior. But you never know what state of mind Jackie might be in when something happens to you too. That's okay. why you should also make sure that it's in somebody writing. Else. And somebody somebody else will be able to say. Because you know, boy, she mess around and lose me. She don't lose her mind. Next. Next. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's gonna real. Go crazy. He's gonna lose crazy. his mind. He's gonna go crazy. Somebody about to step in and walk yeah. up through it. She's gonna be walking around with a veil. She's gonna wear black for the next two years. Oh, God. What's out there? Ain't gonna get remarried. Ain't gonna have another man in my house. Uh, another man ain't gonna wear my clothes. No. They ain't gonna be turning my sh shoes sideways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need a grieving process. Hey, Pearl, you started it. You started it. You started it. Y'all, listen, Charlotte done got engaged. I can. Congratulations. 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 Y'all, we're going to be clowning on that probably next week. We're going to mess with brother about that's a red beret. But anyway, we're going to mess with that later. <laughs> Tell them who you engaged to. Y'all think I'll run back around check on His name ahead. is Christopher Jarvis. Where are you from? He is from Norton, Louisiana. Anybody from Norton, Louisiana that know who? Christopher Jarvis. Start texting me right now. Tell me what I'm dealing with. <laughs> Tell me what I'm about to get into. I know you knew him. You knew him when he was in elementary. You knew him in high school. I need some texting right now. And he was right at now. Louisiana University in Monroe. So okay, they it was called what? in something back then. Uh, Oh, come on. It's NLU like, or something. It's like he changed his name. Yeah. Yeah. Northeast. 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 Yeah, that's what it was back then. So if you yes. know Christopher. Christopher Jarvis. Anything good or bad, text Mr. <laughs> Beckwith and let him know what he is Work. dealing with. Y'all. Have y'all ever traveled out of America to do a service? Thank you, Jackson McHenry, uh, for the question. Have we ever tried out? Listen, we have a partner with um, funeral homes around the world. world. So this is no exaggeration at least a hundred different countries that we have partnered with the uh, other funeral home in that country. So we didn't personally go there and pick up the body and lay it on the, no, but we will. So you might say, say, I'm from Jamaica, or I'm from the Bahamas, or I'm from another country. We'll go to get in his staff travel. Yes, we will. We travel anywhere in the world. There's not too many places in the world I haven't been. There's only one continent out of the seven that I haven't been on. Mm. Did y'all know that? Only one? And that's at the top. <laughs> because it's too cold. <laughs> I just want y'all to be aware of there's only one continent in the so Yes, and who will go there is me. If you want me to personally go and open close the casket in Cape Town, I'll be there. So have we ever handled a service outside of the country? That answer is yes. At least 100 different countries. We have partnered with the funeral home there the same way we partner in different states here. Mm -hmm. We do uh, the same thing. It's just uh, quite a few. I see Terry Wright is, uh, Wright is watching. Now. Oh, okay. My good friends. So yeah. There's so many great people out there that's uh, that's watching. I see my sister-in-law is out there and so many others. I don't want to start calling names because you know what I'm going to do, y'all. Well, I'm going to be somebody that ain't worth a whooping later yeah. on. Yeah. So, y'all, listen. We do this every Saturday morning. So, I'm going to open us up to the Beckwith family. And I think we've been as about as transparent as we can possibly be. can be. And this started at, this is our 2021 20, thing. I brought my sister back on. I've had my other sister. you got my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Y'all, any family members are welcome to come and join us. They just got to be open to what we're talking yeah. about. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is that we help the community. community. Got to. Y'all, it's a community mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. You guys, y'all don't understand how good the community has, has been, been to, to us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how far we have come, not just mm -hmm. financially, and not by, because of the material things we have, but emotionally what yeah. you have done for the Beckwith right. family. Right. Yes. And mentally what you've done. Yes. You have changed our, not only our future, you've changed my children's mm -hmm. future. And, and, and my potential grandchildren. Mm -hmm. uh, they all are the better because what this community have done in supporting the better. And y'all know us. Mm -hmm. Y'all, we, we went to R.L. Thorne, mm -hmm. all three of us. Mm -hmm. You know us. We went, uh, we went to Bow Store. We went to Zoom Wall. Mm -hmm. We went to Sada. We went to Carter. <laughs> we went to Skyline. It ain't like y'all don't know us. You right. know everything about us. And you still support us in Any spite thank of. Thank you. Wait, we can't you. give you enough to say thank, thank you. you for what you have done for the Beckwith family. Right. It's the least we can do yeah. is give this back to you. And then we have to say to ourselves, listen, this wasn't our vision. Yeah. We've been blessed, right. but this belongs to our dad. Yeah. We just hooked on to it's his it's vision <laughs> and his co-tell and all of us are here today because, uh, because of it. We are the better because of John Beckwith Sr. 
in his vision. vision. So we thank God for John Beckwith Sr. and what he has done for us. May God bless you. May God keep you. See you next Saturday. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs>